Kuki Shinobu is a character that the community has been asking for for a while. The only element that didn't have a healer was Electro, but now we have it. If you stuck your hand in the cookie jar and got lucky, you'll have access to a pretty dang valuable character. But somewhere along her journey to become Hokage, she lost her damage. I mean, look at this. This is Jade Cutter's HP buff, Electro Resistance Shred, Mona Damage Bonus, Sarek's Crit Damage buff, and it's like I hit the boss with a wet napkin. While I would love for Kuki to be a massive damage dealer, that's not a role that she can fill without a ton of caveats. That being said, I'll be teaching you what Kuki is best for, how to build her, and what her best teams are. My name is Braxophone, and let's talk about Kuki. But first, I wanted to tell you guys about a super cool sweepstakes that's being hosted by Slick Deals. I've been partnered with them for a bit and they wanted to give back to you guys. So five lucky winners who sign up for Slick Deals with my link through this video will get to choose a prize from the prize pool of NVIDIA graphics cards, including an RTX 3070 Ti. To sign up, all you have to do is open up the description below this video, click the link at the top, and it'll take you to the download page for Slick Deals. Install the browser extension available on Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and Opera. And once it's installed, a page should open that lets you sign up for Slick Deals account. Once you've signed up through my link, you're entered in the sweepstakes to win an NVIDIA graphics card. But you might be wondering, hey Brax, what is Slick Deals? I've never heard of this awesome service before. Slick Deals is a 100% free browser extension that saves you money when you shop online. When you're browsing a website, you can click on the little button at the top to show deals on that site that have been curated by the community. Save on things like PC hardware, games, clothes, and more. I've saved a bunch of money using Slick Deals, and you will too. As long as you create a new account using my link below, you'll be entered for a chance to win awesome NVIDIA prizes. It's a super easy way to save money online, and I highly recommend you guys check out Slick Deals. So first things first, Kuki's stats are low. Her HP is fine, but her base attack is a lot lower than other characters. It doesn't really matter too much since her burst and skill want HP anyways, but it just means that building her as a superconduct DPS is not going to be great. Hoyo really wanted her to be a support. Her skill is an interesting healing skill. Essentially, it deals ticks of damage every one and a half seconds and has a 50% chance to generate a particle with every hit. Every tick of damage also heals for a portion of Kuki's max HP, but only heals the on-field character which will be important in the artifacts section. At Constellation Zero, it lasts for 12 seconds and has a 15 second cooldown. And it takes 30% of Kuki's max HP to activate, which will become relevant with her first Ascension passive that's going to give her a 15% healing bonus when she's below half HP. While we're talking about Ascension passives, her second Ascension passive is another healing-oriented one, where she's going to get bonus healing based on 75% of her Elemental Mastery stat, but also an increase in damage dealt by 25% of her Elemental Mastery. As it stands currently, in 2.7, that elemental mastery bonus is worse than building her full HP, but it may be relevant in the future. Now, Kuki's elemental burst is certainly... Uh, something. It's an AoE damage dealing ability that scales completely on HP, so there's no point in trying to make her deal crazy damage with someone like Bennett. The damage on this ability is incredibly low, but the one thing I did find that it's good for is triggering reactions and applying Electro. It hits quite a few times for being a two second duration, and if you have Kuki below 50% HP, it hits for three and a half seconds instead. Right now, it just doesn't seem all that good, but keep in mind with future characters and potentially Dendro, this ability and Kuki's elemental mastery scaling could become more useful. Since most of Kuki's kit is based off of HP, you don't really have to worry about attack stats at all, so that's just something to keep in mind. For talent leveling priority, I would level her skill. If you're going to level more, you can level her burst followed by her basic attack, but you really don't need to level anything but her skill. But that's basically all you need to know about her kit. But before we talk about her builds, I do want to go over her constellations, so that way you guys know whether or not they're worth pulling for and what's going to be game changing for Kuki. I did make a video on the value of Ito's banner, so if you're interested in whether or not it's worth just pulling for constellations on Kuki at all, I recommend checking out that video. But in the meantime, this is what she does. Her constellation one makes it so her burst has a bigger circle area of damage. It's not really huge, but it's kind of a quality of life change for reaction teams, and in the future that could be really good. Her Constellation 2 increases her skill duration by 3 seconds, meaning she can hypothetically get 100% uptime, and also has more chances to generate particles. Overall, Constellation 2 is probably her best Constellation. C3 increases her skill level by 3, which is a small healing bonus, nothing really to write home about. C4 isn't going to be super great, but it deals a bit of bonus damage based on Kuki's HP roughly every 5 seconds when you're using normal, charged, or plunging attacks. The damage is so minimal that you probably won't even notice it. The one benefit it has though is Electro Application, but it's only still one hit every 5 seconds tops. 
C5 increases our burst by three, which is basically useless, and C6 isn't great either. Whenever Kuki would take lethal damage or die, she'll actually just live through it, but it only works once every 60 seconds, and to be honest, it's sort of skill-based. Like, if you're a pretty good player, you'll basically never need to use this constellation in the first place, which means it gets nearly zero value. It can offer some comfort for players, but the only effect I personally feel is decent is the 150 elemental mastery boost she gets when she drops below 25% HP. Though she's a four star and her constellations can be easier to get than five stars most of the time, after C3, her constellations pretty much fall off. I wouldn't pull for constellations on her personally since they're not game changing and you'll get some over time just as the game goes on. But to be honest, nothing I say is gonna change your mind anyways. So let's move on to artifacts. We're kind of lucky in the artifacts department, because at the moment, Kuki only really wants one artifact set. She has HP scaling and heals, but since she only heals one character at a time and the heals are pretty low, Clam isn't really worth running. Clam would give a bit more damage, and in a superconduct team, that damage would be increased even more. But it's going to be less overall team damage than other options provide. You could also run her on four Noblesse as a generalist support, but there's even a better option than that. The four-piece tenacity of the Millith set is an amazing set for Kuki. It gives an HP bonus with the two-piece, but it also gives a 20% attack bonus to your team whenever an elemental skill hits an opponent. Kuki's skill will consistently deal damage before the buff wears off, so you can have essentially what's a permanent Noblesse buff just off of using her elemental skill. And on top of that, you're getting an HP bonus for her, which helps her heals increase. The only real cases where you wouldn't want to use Noblesse or Tenacity on Kuki would be in cases where you already have Tenacity and Noblesse characters on your team, or you're running a full team of characters that don't scale on attack at all, but that's not every team. There's very few teams that actually use that, and so Tenacity ends up being the best generalist set for Kuki. Now, if you're below AR45, you don't have access to Tenacity yet, or you may have access to it, but you don't really want to overinvest resin into it because you're not guaranteed a five-star artifact every run until you get to AR45 and start dealing the highest level domain. So in the case where you're not AR45 yet, but you want to build Kuki, I would just give her something like Exile or Instructor in the meantime, because those both have great four piece bonuses and it's not too hard to get HP pieces. As for stats, as of the 2.7 patch, Kuki's best build is a healer support build, which means you'll want to use what you can to get the most heals out of her. That means you'll want an HP Sands, HP Goblet, and an HP or healing bonus circlet. If you're using a Favonius weapon, you can also go crit rate for the circlet. Now, that's not to say that her best stats won't change in the future. Keep in mind that she does have elemental mastery scaling, so if Dentro comes along and reacts with Electro, her optimal build may actually switch. Also, elemental mastery can be good in something like Taser, where Kuki triggers some reactions, or an overload team. Ultimately, it's up to you, but for now, I recommend investing into HP or healing bonus for a solid general support build, since that's what Kuki scales off of. That's what I found to be the most consistent from test since the overload teams I tried weren't amazing, and overall it's not too hard to farm for HP pieces. As for substats, focus on HP percent and elemental mastery, energy recharge, and then crit. Luckily, you don't actually have to build much energy recharge on Kuki if you're using her on the right teams or with the right weapons. While you won't be fine with zero energy recharge, generally you don't really have to worry about it past 160%, but again, it's really easy to get her burst up with just the right team setup or weapons. So now that you're an expert on Kuki's stats, let's talk about her best weapons. As I mentioned before, this video is not focused on physical cookies, so the weapons we're going to talk about are pointed at a support cookie build. Luckily for us, they're pretty straightforward. The best weapon for support cookie is going to be Freedom Sworn. Once she triggers two reactions, even when off field, your team gains 20% attack and a bunch of damage bonus to your normal plunging and charged attacks. Essentially, it's just a massive buff that your team gets for free, and the Elemental Mastery main stat helps out cookie's healing. If you have one to spare, I would use Freedom Sworn. Outside of that, my favorite four-star weapon on cookie and one of the most effective ones is definitely Favonius Sword. I'll probably make a separate video about the value of Favonius weapons, but essentially what you need to know is that they generate a bunch of particles when the wielder lands a crit on field. In this instance, since Kuki's damage is low no matter how much you invest really, you can give up on damaging weapons and focus on using Kuki's amazing support capabilities to battery other members of your team. Favonius is an amazing choice and I highly recommend it if you don't have Freedom Sworn. The third weapon I recommend is the free-to-play Iron Sting. The main reason I recommend it is because it gives elemental mastery 
which can help out a bit with their healing output. And then if you have access to it, Jade Cutter can also work pretty well on Kuki for the HP bonus it gives, but ultimately I would still recommend Favonius over it since the crit rate on her without Favonius is pretty much a dead stat. The difference between hitting 500 damage per tick versus 1200 damage per tick just because you're critting really is not worth it. One last thing I want to note about weapons is that Sacrificial Sword is nearly useless on Kuki. She doesn't really generate particles when you cast her skill, they generate over time, but not on the initial cast. So Sacrificial's passive will ultimately get wasted, there's no point in using her skill twice in a row. Once you've got your Kuki a weapon, you can finally start putting her in some teams and challenging hard content. So, I have some bad news. Kuki isn't really that flexible. Realistically, you can use her wherever you want, but if you're looking to truly optimize damage, you're gonna want to use her in Taser. There's tons of variants of Taser, and it's overall just an amazing team that can clear most content. So we're gonna talk about Taser, but I also do have two other teams you can use if you really just don't care about Spiral Abyss, but you want to have a functional team. But anyways, let's talk about Taser first. So this one has Sucrose, Kuki, and two flex spots. In this specific example, I'm using Sucrose. Sucros, Kuki, Beto, and Syncho. Kuki is Favonius to battery Beto, and Syncho provides a tiny bit of healing, damage reduction, and high damage. That being said, running Fischl is also good in Beto's place, and definitely easier to set up since she doesn't need you funneling energy into her. Beto can be harder to set up and use than Fischl. You can also run Yelan instead of Syncho for more damage if you choose, or alternatively, you could run Syncho and Yelan together. Those are all super basic Taser variants, but all of them will deal solid damage and be able to clear the hardest content. There's also the more fancy taser variants, like Ayato Taser with Ayato Kuki, another Electro, and an Animo, or you can even use her in Kokomi Taser. But Kuki's heals become less valuable in Kokomi Taser, since Kokomi is healing so much, so at that point running Fischl Beto would be better anyways. Taser just has so many different variants, and all of them are good, but the nice thing about Kuki being that she gives you a new unit to use in them, and also provides original Taser with a dedicated healer. I really enjoy Taser since it itches my ADHD brain with all the colors and stimulation, but Let's talk about other teams too. Another team I've enjoyed using Kuki in is a Eula team with Eula, Kuki, Rosaria, and Deflex. Kuki has near 100% uptime on Tenacity, so you basically always have an attack buff, and Rosaria deals a ton of damage on her own, but also shreds physical resistance at C6. For the Flex, you can use an animal character or a shielder like Zhongli with its own resistance shred too. The team is pretty functional, though one of the main downsides is that it's just always going to be less optimal than the Diona version. Because with Diona, you can have a second cryo, shield, and healer all in one character, which leaves your other slots open to damage dealers and batteries. And the thing is, Diona also helps battery Eula very, very well. So if you were hoping Kuki would be an upgrade, she's not quite that, but she can be used if you're just someone who wants to play your favorite characters. Now, the last team I want to talk about is a Kuki overload team, and to be honest, it's not something that I recommend, but I'm mostly including it just so that you have other team options. You want a Pyro Carry, Kuki, and Double Hydro. The main reason you don't want to run a second Electro is because you want Kuki to be the one triggering all of the overloads with a full elemental mastery build. For example, I ran Diluc, Kuki, Yelan, and Singcho to get a ton of vaporize and overload damage together. You could also use Hu Tao, but since she prefers to be at low HP, Kuki could actually be a detriment to her. Also, you have the free to play option of Shang Ling for a carry, but you'll have trouble getting her burst up. You can also use Kokomi instead of Yelan here as well, and it ends up being okay, but you can run into energy issues with that as well. I really can't recommend this team because it's inconvenient to play with enemies being knocked back constantly, and honestly, it's not as good of damage as the other teams I mentioned, but at the end of the day, if you're going to play Kuki in an overload setup, this is how you'd want to do it. Now, one thing to note is that if you do play Kuki with Favonia Sword, you'll have a lot of opportunities to battery different characters, which means that you can afford to have one flexible teammate at least in most teams, but I would still mostly recommend her for Taser if you're going to use her, at least until we see Dendro and whether or not she'd be good with it. So after all of that testing, playing Kuki through Spiral Abyss in different teams and writing out this guide and going over everything with you guys, what are my final thoughts on Kuki? Well, to be honest, guys, I don't think she's that good. And I'm not saying that as someone who doesn't want you to play Kuki, you can play her, I don't really care. But at the end of the day, she does not perform as well as a lot of other characters in the current patch in 2.7. I don't think she's going to be useless forever. I think that there's going to be some kind of gimmick that she has later on or some team she's best in at some point. It's just that right now, the only reason you play Kuki Shinobu is because you want to play Kuki Shinobu. 
not because she's the best at anything in particular unless you want to say you know electro healing but i guess i just mean she's not meta defining but overall like you can play her she's functional enough to get you through the hardest content if you play her in the right team setup and with the right investment into your other characters so at the end of the day it doesn't really matter how good she is but for me personally if i didn't want ito i wouldn't roll for shinobu on this banner because she's going to come back on future banners four stars always come back and she's not super game changing at the moment as of 2.7 so with that being said you guys thank you so much for watching this guide and honestly all of my videos the support recently has been absolutely amazing and i i honestly can't thank you guys enough so if you guys enjoyed the video make sure to subscribe down below hit the like button if you've enjoyed as well and comment down below if you're using shinobu and what your favorite thing is about her come check out my twitch at twitch.tv slash braxophone if you want to see some live gameplay and testing and other than that i'll see you guys later peace